Hi, Dan Purser, Dr. Dan Purser, danpursermd.com. Um, welcome to my Facebook Live tonight. So you know this is being recorded for YouTube and this Facebook page. If you wonder why I'm looking down, I'm reading from my iPhone because I've got this massive list I'm working on. Brecken's going to be asking me questions. Um, how are you doing, Brecken? I'm doing good. How are you? Ready for this? I'm ready. Everyone's this ready. completely blown up or what has happened? Wow. Yeah, they love that. Uh, 102,000... Um, what are those things called? Engagements. Engagements uh, and uh, 1,500 comments. Wow, I'll, I'll scared me to death. Uh, watch for my upcoming next Facebook video. Remember, this is gonna be really big. You think tonight's big? One-year-old versus vaccine versus genetics versus autism. I don't know what we'll call it, but it's gonna be something like that. Um, it's where Mike Clark of Austin and he and I go through this, uh, on, and we'll do it in a video and also PowerPoint so you can kind of see the whole thing unfold. But it's where we go through this video and, um, and um, sorry, we record this video where we go through this genetic testing on this uh, one-year-old child uh, and discuss how he's got all these, um, these crazy genetic problems that won't allow him to safely um, get the big vaccines um, parents are going to have to space them out or we'll figure it out. Mike and I will figure it out. Uh, no one else is really doing this kind of testing now. So, uh, and I'll show you all how to get that kind of testing if you want it with your children. Um, I'm going to grab a book here. If you haven't read this book, you might want to. You might want to grab it off Amazon. It kind of blew up the last time I said to, to get it. So it's, it's um, I think, 8 million people downloaded it. I'm, I'm teasing, but... Um, it's a great book, How to End the Autism Epidemic by J.B. Handley. Great book on autism. Mike Clark suggested that, so I went out and bought it. Um, Mike Clark is this amazing guy who um, is an attorney uh, and a PhD and all this stuff in Austin. He's uh, run medical clinics and zoned a bunch of them and is just, a, just brilliant. Uh, so we're going to go through all that. Uh, if you also want to uh, want to know or see my more personal posts or behind the scenes looks at me, I look, yeah, looks at me and my uh, speaking events from all over the world, uh, like I was in Iceland, all these places. Go follow me on on Instagram at danperser.md. You'll get a whole different angle on me. When I posted this morning, I just want to say thanks for all the questions today. I tried to keep up answering them. There were literally at one point at 750, I just. I had to leave. I was exhausted. It was uh, it was approaching 5:30, and I I crawled home um, and um, rested a minute. Now we're doing this this Facebook live. Your questions were incredible. We're going to try and go through some of those here in a minute. Uh, so words count. We uh, got to be really careful so we don't violate FTC and FDA rules regarding these products. I have to be really careful what I say and how I say it. So I'll be obtuse occasionally. You got to go with that. And just realize that you just got to read between the lines. But I am going to be obtuse, more, maybe more than I want to be, but I don't have any other way to explain them. So my newest book and my long-awaited vitamin deficiency book is coming soon. Uh, Jared Larkin and I wrote that together, and he's getting ready to go to medical school. I had him do all the research on, on vitamin deficiencies, and plus I put all my personal stories in there of all the patients I've taken care of with massive vitamin deficiencies and what I saw, how we diagnosed it, how we looked at it. It's really going to be a good book. So the launch date's coming soon. I will, of course, for all my Facebook friends and email lists, we'll, uh, we'll probably run it free for a while. So please download it. Those few days you run it free so you can, you can get it and any reviews of it would be really helpful. Okay, we'll announce the winners of the prizes tonight at the end. <laughs> Some of your questions are hilarious. I just want to let you know you got Almost 400 people watching you. Oh, wow. There's 400 the of you watching me from all over the world. Um, that's crazy. Um, you're in my house. Does that make you nervous? Um, makes me nervous. Okay, so, uh, and anyway, um, so what was I even talking about? Oh, we're going to announce the winners at the end tonight. So some of your questions were incredible and hilarious, and, and some of them were still laughing at. I think you were trying to be funny. I hope you were. We're also uh, working on... Um, I call it my most amazing podcast shows uh, right now. So that's coming also. We'll be doing podcasts. Uh, now, let me talk to you about these. These these are the bad boys that I'm giving away. I'm giving away 
three sets of these tonight to the best questions. They win the prizes. If you don't have these, especially this one, see it? Um, you need to get it. This should be every woman's best friend out there, uh, especially if you're perimenopausal or heading that way. This is great comfort. It's magic sauce. Magic sauce. So you need to get some. If you don't have it, tell your friends about it. If you don't know what it is, um, this is the best, most amazing thing ever. So you need to grab some. And it's by Young Living Essential Oils, uh, and it's a great product. So, so why Clary Sage? Clary Sage uh, is crazy. And I'm not talking about any specific brand, though you know the brand I like, Clary Sage. Um, you know, and uh, tonight we're going to be actually using Scarsons. But Clary Sage, whole other issue. Uh, I did over 700 labs on women who were postmenopausal, who had had a hysterectomy, had their ovaries removed, or were postmenopausal, they were in their 80s or 70s, and they had normal levels of estradiol. And I don't think it was really estradiol, I think it was Clary Sage and the lab picked up on it, but it, there's a number of studies that gives them the benefits of, of estradiol. So Clary Sage, I love Clary Sage. Um, when patients want more natural options, don't want to use hormones, I'll throw them at Clary Sage or throw Clary Sage at them, so to speak. Is that all right to say? So, and they'll try it. So, that's why I'm, you'll hear me talking about Clary Sage tonight. I love it. Um, and uh, why progesterone? Progesterone's amazing. Matter of fact, my, um, this is my number one book on, well, it's, this is my, the Spanish version of my number one book, Progesterone. I can't even say it right, but, um, but it's sold, uh, hundreds of thousands of copies. Uh, it's been the um, my number one book for a number of years. It's uh, been as high as number one overall on Amazon before. It was the number three bestseller for a while. I have pictures of all that. That was crazy that this book made its way. It's just a simple book about progesterone, but everything's referenced. Jackson, can you, what does it say in the front of it? it in English or Spanish? English. Uh, it says progesterone, the... Uh, Women's feel good hormone. Yes, yeah, that's what. And what are these things? Do you remember these? Uh, no? oh. Yeah, raise your libido, prevent cancer, breast cancer, prevent migraines, and uh, gain add weight loss. Yep, that's about right. So there it is. You've heard it. Uh, and that this is my Spanish version. It's even sold some copies. Can you believe that? Um, let me talk to you about a few other books. Well, I'm not, try not to cover your face too much with the books, just oh. so we can hear you better. Okay, sorry, I'll, I'll, I won't do that again. Um, my Resolving Osteoporosis, the Cure and Guidebook, was also a bestseller on Amazon. If you don't know me, I've had 15 number one books on Amazon, uh, and just a ton of bestsellers uh, over and over and over again. Uh, this is my Osteoporosis book. For all you women facing menopause, get this book. Do not get Osteoporosis. Got it? Not allowed. This is really the natural options for dealing with osteoporosis. But notice I said cure and guidebook because I'll show you how to reverse your osteoporosis if you have it, what you can do to get rid of it, all that, without taking really horrible uh, drugs that have 75% side effect rates, which is accurate. This is my genetics book. It was number one for two years in the medical genetics section on Amazon. It's called the 85% Solution. It's really about MTHFR, but about a lot of other genetic errors too. So just showing you what I've got here. My estradiol book. Uh, boy, did I keyword, oh yeah, did I keyword this incredibly. Um, menopause, estrogen, and estradiol. So if you have questions about estrogen, why did your doctor prescribe it? How should he prescribe it? Why should they prescribe it? What kind of version of it should they prescribe? Get this book. It's inexpensive. You can get it Kindle or paperback on Amazon. And Da, 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 da. It's been out for a while. It was number one for a while. It's the essential oils, healthy menopause. So this can answer a lot of the questions tonight that you that you ladies and some of you gentlemen have about all this. Um, you should get this book on Amazon. It's all about uh, history and, and research secrets uh, and things we did uh, at Young Living and all that kind of stuff. So if you're curious, it's called Essential Oils and Healthy Menopause. Just go to Dan Purser. MD at, on Amazon, you'll find all my bugs. Uh, now let's discuss menopausal fatigue or fatigue, because a lot of you asked me questions about that today. 
fatigue is just fatigue, whether you're menopausal or premenopausal or perimenopausal. If you have fatigue, the first thing I usually do is think, is this a vitamin deficiency? I, from, from an MD perspective, no, I don't use Adderall. No, I don't use Ritalin. No, I'm not going to give you band-aids. I want to try and find out why you're indeed fatigued. And almost always the most common cause is you have nutritional deficiencies or vitamin deficiencies. And I look at intracellular levels um, and I dig deep. Serum levels aren't very helpful due to genetic problems a lot of us carry, especially young living distributors and my family and everyone else. It's fairly common nowadays. So don't just fall for serum levels. If you're really fatigued and can't feel like you can't even function through each day, you need to contact me or my office. I can really help. I'd love to help you. I want to stamp out fatigue all over the world. So if I can help, let me know. Uh, we also do genetic testing. I'm going to suggest it. Um, I do have a, uh, a new video coming out soon uh, where Mike Clark of Austin, Texas, he and I discuss a one-year-old's genetic testing versus him receiving the vaccines versus uh, being becoming autistic. And we try and cover all that and some other testing too. Uh, so I can show you how to do that relatively inexpensively and, um, and get answers. And you can use that video as a baseline. So you know, we'll hear what we say about the various uh, problems in it. And we'll cover a lot of stuff in that video. It'll be here on Facebook, probably in the next two or three weeks that's coming out. I know a lot of you've been waiting for that. So I showed you my Resolving Osteoporosis Curing Guidebook. Do not get osteoporosis. That is crazy. Listen to me. We, you're not allowed. Anyone who's listening to this, this or watching this video tonight, you're not allowed to get osteopenia or osteoporosis. If you have it and you can't get rid of it and you're wondering why and you're also fatigued and tired, boy, can I tell you, you probably have a vitamin D, a vitamin K, a vitamin E, just a ton of vitamin deficiencies. So you saw me in a lot of my posts today, answers say, try um, try Master Formula, because I'm assuming most of you are living distributors are watching this, or try a good all natural multivitamin. I helped design Master Formula um, with the, the Spectra Cell results, the lab testing we had on people, and I would want to get that on you, but try Master Formula first if you haven't. So talk to your upline or, or neighbors or whoever and get some master formula because we really help that to deal with intracellular problems we saw among young, young living distributors. Vaginal dryness, painful, cracked, horrible, loss of libido, all that. That's a separate problem. That's lack of testosterone. No testosterone or lack of it and it will torture you. You have a couple options. One, don't get that way for heaven's sakes. If you're postmenopausal, I, that's why you see me always saying take um, PD8020 one a day for a couple of weeks and one twice a week. That'll keep your pregnenolone and DHA levels up. And, um, and women readily convert both pregnenolone and DHA to testosterone, especially testosterone, especially DHEA, to testosterone. But if it's still there, you might want to contact me or go to your local compounding pharmacy and beg them for help. Tell them you need a testosterone cream. It is the only thing that will cure that. For all of you asking those questions, trust me, get your doctor or a doctor or some doctor in your community or the compounding pharmacist will give you the name of a doctor who will help prescribe that so you can get rid of that. I, it's the number one horrible thing I see when I go out and speak to large groups of women. I don't see it, but they tell me about it. So... Um, that sounded weird, so, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, early or premature menopause causes. That's a big issue. I deal a lot with 20 something year olds or 30 something year olds with ovarian failure or, uh, ovarian, it's also called ovarian insufficiency and their ovaries aren't working very well. No one knows why usually, but it's just happening. I will find out why. I know why. There are ways to figure out exactly what's going on with your ovaries. So 99% of the time you can figure out why, not always, but almost always. So, um, and stop that nonsense, stop that ovarian failure. Uh, so first thing I do is probably a spectra cell micronutrient panel. Then I do genetic testing. We would figure it out. So do not go down that path. If you have to, if you know someone who is, um, have them get help either from me or someone. So, Okay, I think I've covered my list, Brecken. Sorry, I rocked and rolled through that. That was good. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Um, 
So remember, if you don't have any of this, get some. This stuff's crazy good. So, okay, Brecken, ask away. Um, first question just from someone who just answered or asked a question. You mentioned testosterone just a second ago. They're wondering if the Idaho blue spruce would help women. If you're in menopause, yeah, it would help, but not enough. I think PD8020, Idaho blue spruce are good options. Uh, but um, you're going to need probably more help than that if you have the dryness and all that. That's just horrible. But try it first. Can't hurt. Uh, I did a lot of the original testing on that product. I'm, I'm the one who, who found out what it did. But um, And uh, that's a Young Living product, clearly. But uh, Gary, Gary loved that stuff. But... Um, yeah, so um, try it, but it, it, I don't know if it'll be enough to help with that. Cool. Um, a big question we got is where is the best place to apply these oils, specifically Progestins Plus in the Clary Sage? Wrist, neck, switch around a lot behind your knees, inside your ankles at your ovary Vitaflex points, um, thin skinned areas with no hair if you can. So, um, and uh, hopefully you don't have hair on your neck. Um, but um, yeah, and that's the best place. And, and, and the, the clary sage or the sclerescent, anyway, the sclerescent you use in the morning and the progestins plus I'd use at night. I know it says twice a day or, or morning and night, but I'd use it mostly at night. So you said to switch around, how come? Why do you recommend switching places for application? Just for receptor help and um, and also uh, to prevent from irritation because it irritates your skin. Okay. Um, another big question is, do either of these help with bone health or osteoporosis or osteopenia? I can't answer about these products. Being obtuse here, but uh, obscure maybe. But progesterone and estradiol and testosterone all help send minerals into bones. That's how, when you're premenopausal uh, and, and haven't had perimenopause or any of that, that's why they don't have osteoporosis. It's after menopause when the estradiol leaves, the progesterone leaves and the testosterone disappears that women become osteoporotic because they, have, they don't have the hormones driving the minerals, calcium, vitamin D, vitamin K, um, magnesium, zinc, all that into the bones to make them hard to build the bone structure. So um, you have to figure out the answer to that question without me getting in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, and then you talked about endometriosis a little bit with the book that you recommend that you've written. Um, do you have any information regarding endometriosis and these oils specifically that you've Again, I'm gonna be obtuse, but um, progesterone, I always use that and a lot of it. I tend to use a lot of it, especially with more severe cases of of, uh, when I talk about progesterone, I'm talking about natural progesterone, not the birth control kind that's not natural, not the not the kind out there that's synthetic uh, bad, but natural progesterone, bioidentical to what your body makes, um, will get rid of or help control the symptoms of endometriosis. I've seen it a hundred times, a thousand times, where women came in and were having bad endometriosis, and, uh, and I give them... Um, something that you might be familiar with, or I give them um, lots of progesterone uh, sublingually or capsules, and we get rid of the symptoms. If you have endometriosis, forget about it. There's no reason you should be suffering from it. If you haven't tried big doses of progesterone, then you've missed it. You go back and cycle back. I don't care how old you are or, or what's going on with you. Take a lot of it and um, and you'll, you could probably control your endometriosis. I've, I've done it with hundreds of patients and it's worked every time. Awesome. Okay, I'm just diving into all the questions that you guys were asking earlier on his Facebook page. So if you hear yours, um, hopefully you do. So hang on, and I get a lot of flack from women go, well, that's simplistic uh, on endometriosis. It's still a lot more complicated than that. Really, you look at the literature, it's, it's, it's not, I can go on for hours about this, but uh, and, and these are women who've never tried big doses of, of uh, progesterone for their endometriosis. So they're kind of wallowing in their endometriosis when really they need to try the big natural doses of it first. They'd find out really quickly if I'm right or not. So sorry. Okay, go ahead. No, that's great. Um, so first question. We're, we're talking fast and moving fast because we got 
500 questions. No, a thousand. Okay. We had over a thousand yeah, questions. Yeah, I answered probably two or three hundred today alone. Oh. <laughs> so someone said that they've noticed that their energy level is tanked and they don't sleep well at night, which is causing them to lead to have lots more napping and they're craving carbs a whole lot more for the first time in their life. Um, will using these oils or any other oils help find the natural energy level in their body again? I think definitely these would help a lot. Natural progesterone would help a lot too. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, so being obtuse here, not that obtuse, but natural progesterone could help a lot with helping with your energy levels and helping you sleep. Use it at night and you'll be conked out and you'll wake up refreshed and happier the next morning. Tons of studies on progesterone. It dramatically reduces breast cancer risk. Get my little progesterone book. If you have any doubts, everything's referenced. Get it, live it, love it, take it. Okay, sorry. Awesome. <laughs> um, what kind of dosing do you suggest for using the oil? Like how many drops? Does it depend on your age, your afflictions? Like eight, eight, start low, go slow, but always the you can go as high as eight and you can use it, you know, more than once a day, but usually eight a day is plenty. Uh, start always start low, one drop, so one drop, and then after a few days, go. Ah, I think I want to try two. Go slow. So that's one of my start low, go slow. It's been my motto for all you uh, followers for years. I still believe it. So try it. And all varies per person. You'll know if you're taking enough. If you're not, think why well, I need a bigger dose of something. Uh, I need to talk to a doctor who knows what he's doing with this stuff. And they're out there. If you wonder if you have a doctor in your community, he might be able to help you. Talk to your compounding pharmacist near you or in your community, and they'll tell you. They'll go, oh, yeah, Dr. Schmedlarp over on 4th Street. He really knows his stuff. Go, I'm for Dr. Schmedlarp. So, yeah, go see Dr. Schmedlarp or me. <laughs> We've had some international people who use Vital Plus, and they've been talking about it, and some people are wondering what's the difference or is there any reason why... Yeah, no, not much difference. Phyto Plus has chase tree, berry, and root and leaf oil in it. It's it's also crazy good. It's uh, it's uh, chase tree has been used for thousands of years in monasteries and 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 uh, by monks even uh, and by sisters. Um, and they would chew the leaf. The monks would to um, to get rid of libido issues, which progesterone would do that in men. And um, and the women would use it to help with uh, PMS or uh, hot flashes or night sweats and uh, menopausal symptoms and help balance their menopause stuff. So they'd chew the trace tree, uh, leaf, berry, twig, stem, root, whatever they could find of it, I think. If there's a chase tree near there, it's going down. And um, so, yeah. So, and we made it with, uh, sorry, it's been made with chase tree. Instead of progesterone, because those countries won't allow it. Awesome. Um, how about does progesterone plus work with PCOS and perimenopause? What do you recommend with those? I can't comment about progesterone plus working with those, but progesterone uh, definitely helps with PCOS and perimenopause. It's what's missing in both of those conditions. It's like endometriosis. You should try it and try lots of it. Um, and again, I'm, I'm being obtuse, but you, you get what I'm saying. Um, use a lot of progesterone uh, and see if you can have benefits from it. Um, I almost guarantee you'll have benefits from bioidentical progesterone for sure uh, and lots of it. But um, and if you if not, you're using the wrong kind. So uh, and I should write a book on PCOS. I should write a book on endometriosis. And I kind of did the Spanish book. No, I'm teasing, but. Um, can you read this in, in Spanish, Jackson? Progesterona, la hormona definitiva del bienestar femenino. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Jackson served a church mission in, in Mexico, and now he runs our I, IT and our companies and stuff. Anyway, so, um, yeah, but pro progesterone can really help with, uh, with those problems, especially PCOS. What do you... But I'll tell you something else else with PCOS. Sorry. No, you're good. Well, uh, is D chiral inositol. If you haven't tried it, try that bad boy. Uh, and it's not a young living product. It's really hard to find. Uh, but D chiral inositol, uh, and, um, and check it out. DCI 
or decarol inositol. It's a mirror image of, of inositol, the, the, the B vitamin inositol. But man, does it work wonders with PCOS. Okay, sorry. Go no, ahead. you're totally good. Um, what do you recommend for thinning hair? Yeah, hmm, that kind of hits close to home. <laughs> Are you, is that really him to me? <laughs> um, for women, um, there's a book called The Ball Truth About Women's Hair Loss. Uh, you need to get that first, but I'll just sum it up for you. It's a vitamin deficiency. Uh, try Master Formula. If that doesn't work, call me. Call me, and we'll uh, we'll help you get the testing done properly. That'll look at intracellular levels. It's 99, 98% of the time. It's a crazy vitamin deficiency. I would try Master Formula and, uh, oh, the um, Mineral Essence. In a little glass of Ningxia, that's how you take it. So, um, because it gives you a bunch of minerals and maybe one of the minerals you're missing. And it, But by the end of, you know, a month or two of that, you haven't seen improvement, call me. So, or set it up and, I, and you get all kinds of ways to get a hold of me. DanPersonMD.com, you can go in there and schedule an appointment. Super easy now. And, um, and but yeah, it's usually a vitamin deficiency. So try those first. If not, you know what to do. Great. Um... How do we know the difference between premenopause and menopause? Is it determined by age or symptoms? By it's determined by symptoms. The difference between premenopause and menopause is determined by symptoms. Premenopause, the progesterone levels drop usually a few months to years, uh, several years before uh, menopause actually occurs. Menopause is complete cessation or lack of a menstrual cycle for at least six months. That's menopause. Once you do that. Rarely do women have another cycle, though. I've heard enough times that some women occasionally do, but they might have one or two after that. Uh, but if you're younger, though, because the average age for menopause is 51 in this country, and if you're younger than that, a lot younger than that, it's got to be either genetics or pituitary or um, pituitary damage or ovarian damage, or it could be most likely a vitamin deficiency of some sort. I know that sounds crazy, but I've seen it so many times. So, um, and we deal with it so many times, so many times in our, in my practice that, uh, and they're able to slowly but surely they get their cycles back and get onto a normal life, even have a baby, do whatever, but you've got to deal with those deficiencies or it's bad. Go ahead. Sorry. No, that's good. Um, can you use progestins plus with an IUD that contains progestin or any birth control pill with progestins plus? Do you have any yeah, you can use them with those. Okay. We prefer you didn't. Uh, and Young Living prefers that too because the only reason which is those things cause a lot of clots, heart attacks, strokes. And we don't want to ever want persistence plus blame for that. So that's why we say don't take them together. But now you know why. We don't want to be blamed for the other thing. We've never had a stroke, heart attack, or any problem with the, with the persistence plus in that regard. So... Um, so yeah, you can use it with it. You definitely can. Awesome. Um, I'd get rid of those things first though. Okay. <laughs> that's another video, huh? Yeah, that's another, oh, man, that's a storm. <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> what do you recommend for women who have too much estrogen? Do you have any health lifestyle change that you recommend? No, 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 okay. no. It's not that you have too much estrogen. You don't have enough progesterone. I, sorry, I haven't taught you guys in a while. But it's not, and a lot of my fans and followers before who attended my Dr. Dan personal hormone health events, yeah, I used to have those all over the country. And there'd be like a thousand of you there every time. But um, but it's lack of enough progesterone that is the problem. That's what balances out your estrogens. So it's not that you're making too much estradiol, it's that you're not making enough progesterone. So you want to take more progesterone or find out why you're not making enough. Okay. Um, can you use PD8020 with Progestins Plus? And if someone is using Clarisage and Progestins Plus, would they even need to take PD20 or 8020? Yeah, PD8020, I just told you, yes. Good question. I love PD8020. It's one of my favorites. Um, and I even take it once or twice a week. Uh, but after you've taken it for a while, it may cause you to break out. So you got to back it down to once or twice a week. You can take it daily for a while. Just realize it may cause you to break out, like I said. Um, and uh, because you'll readily convert the DHEA and pregnenolone in it to hopefully to testosterone. And you need that. Um, 
There's a really good book uh, on testosterone. It's called Testosterone. And it's um, by a woman in Arizona, a really awesome physician for the life of me. I can't remember her name right offhand, but um, but you need to get that book if you have questions about it or, or um, email our office um, or email um, info at, at uh, is it danpersonmd.com or, or doc, Danper, email info at danpersonmd.com and we'll send you this reference list of uh, 30 plus benefits of testosterone for women so you can see. That's why I haven't bothered to write the book about it myself. One, there was a really good book out there. Number two, I have this awesome list and um, and for receiving your email, we'd love to send you that list. So it's a really cool list. Okay, go ahead. It is really cool. Um, does one continue to use Progestins Plus after menopause? Yes, forever. Cool. No, use it forever. Is there any age limit? Like, could a teenager... When you're dead. No, but, like, could a teenager take it? <laughs> like, say someone has a daughter who's going through really bad PMS, would she be able to take this? Well, I can't discuss <laughs> progestins plus specifically. Uh, we would never do that. But for natural progesterone, we even gave our 13-year-old, 12-year-old um, natural progesterone when she was having that little kind of fake cycle she was having uh, before she started and it really helped. And while she has them now, she's still taking, it's only been a few years, but um, so yes, a natural progesterone would be an option and great option. And yeah, you don't want to give it to an eight year old or 10 year old or whatever, but uh, but there's girls going through Menarche or, or a lot younger nowadays, like 11 or 12. And I think it's all right to give them a little smidge of it. And that's, and that's perfect um, for you distributors, if you know what I mean. I think you know. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Okay. So this is someone who has MT Jafar, had a past evidence of PCOS, had a regular cycle, but now doesn't after losing a major weight, amount of weight. Um, now they don't have a cycle, but they're looking to conceive. Does progesterone, is that an option for them or not? Progesterone's a great option for them, but more importantly, I wouldn't go there yet. I would find out, I'd do that spectra cell intracellular micronutrient panel. I would probably consider DCI. I'd look, want to look more at their genetics in that nutrient panel. They call me, Let's we can figure that out. And I'm a lot cheaper than you paying 12,000 for IVF that isn't gonna work uh, in your situation. Um, and let me um, let me guide you on some more natural options and a lot less expensive options that could really help you. And so, um, yeah, I see women going and pay twelve thousand to get pregnant using IVF. Uh, wow! And they haven't really covered the basics. Like, do they have any vitamin deficiencies? Does their husband have any vitamin deficiencies? Is this why they can't get pregnant? Is this why they're not making enough progesterone? Is this why they're not cycling correctly? Do they have genetic errors preventing it? No one looks at all that stuff anymore. They just go straight to the IVF because they can just charge for it and it's a lot. So um, so I'm saying there's more basic, really inexpensive options you can pursue and they should be pursued. Gotcha. So there's been a couple comments about people who've been medically forced into menopause. Do you have any recommendations for them on how to go forward with this or what recommendations? Medically forced? You mean like yeah. at gunpoint? I've had or? a couple comments about that. Like, like in a slave camp or what? Of concentrate? I don't know. Okay, let's not go there. But um, I think what they mean is they've had a surgical menopause or some maybe they've had a car wreck and, and damaged their abdomen so their ovaries and uterus had to be removed, all that. Um, yeah, do replacement. I've had a 19, 20 year old who was thrown into menopause from a car wreck. I've had girl, a lot of girls in their twenties who had car wrecks or trauma or accidents and, and, um, and, and it kind of destroyed their ovaries or, or their uterus or whatever. You still should take, replace all the hormones from an endocrinological standpoint. You should replace the progesterone, the testosterone, the DHA, which is made in your ovaries. Um, and the, uh, and the, the estradiol and the estrogens, you should definitely replace those big time and do it as long as you can. I've had women in their 60s and even a woman who's 70 not, who'd not gone through menopause. Uh, and my, I always think there's no limit to how long you should stay 
on those hormones, no matter what. Uh, doctors say they're wrong. The literature says otherwise. And so I believe in taking them forever. But if they make you feel good and you and you continue to feel awesome and wonderful and you're 85 and you're still taking them, I have a lot of patients who do that. Keep taking them. There's no reason to stop them unless you have developed some weird cancer or breast cancer or something like that. And your doctor says to her, you developed a clot for some reason or whatever. Um, so. Gotcha. Uh, another big, one of the most common questions I got asked was, what's the best thing for hot flashes? People are drenching wet, they're saying. They don't know what to do. Hmm. Let me think about Show that for closer. a second. Show it closer. <laughs> Wait, what? No, this is, oh, well, no. Um, so natural progesterone, lots of it. I like the RDTs. Get my little progesterone book. Seriously, not this one. Unless you read Spanish, so. Um, and it looks the same. It just says progesterone. So, because um, it'll answer your questions on all that. Natural progesterone. I love the RDTs, the rapid dissolve church you put on your tongue. That's another option. Uh, of course, there are topical things out there. Yeah, who uh, that you could probably try um, and uh, and get relief, but um, yeah, you need to take progesterone. That's what's missing. Ninety five percent of the time, it's low progesterone. Three percent of the time, it's low estrogens. Um, Two percent of the time, it's low testosterone. And I know the math isn't right, but less than one percent of the time, it's thyroid or DHEA or something like that. So you got to go with those options and try it. 95% of the time, though, it's lack of enough progesterone. So find something with progesterone in it and try it or get a natural progesterone or talk to your compounding pharmacist in your community if you need to go big. Sometimes you just got to go bigger. So, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, another common question was weight gain around like belly, midriff, hips, and people are saying they're dieting, they're trying to have smaller portions, but they just can't get rid of that weight around their belly. Do you have any recommendations? Yeah, it could be hormonal. I'd have to look at the hormones on them. I'd have to look at genetic stuff too if they wanted me to. There's a lot of possibilities there. Also, when we did, when I wrote that textbook on preventive medicine way back when, we looked at the Harvard professional studies. I just had this discussion today with the patient. What we saw, we called it 147. It's, it's David Paffenbarger's work at Harvard. And, um, and he looked at all the, the dentists, MDs, lawyers, and, um, and followed them for years, decades. And what he saw was this, what we called it 147 is one hour a day, four miles per hour, which is a brisk walk, seven days a week, and you can maintain your weight. You get it, that allows you to maintain your weight. If you starve yourself uh, and do more than that, you might lose weight. That's what it takes to start losing weight. You gotta do more than one, four, seven, and you gotta be hungry every night. So that's one thing I know doctors love to say exercise and you've tried it. So uh, if, if you have symptoms of menopause or perimenopause, you gotta deal with those. Getting your hormones optimized, not at the low end of the range, but the high end of the range is where you wanna be. It could be lack of testosterone. It could be uh, genetics, especially MTHFR, and some of those um, really slow down your metabolism uh, because of methylation issues. It could be some of that. If you think it's that, that and you, you can't find a doctor in your area to help, hey, it's what I do, it's what I'm here for, and I'll be more than happy to help you get testing for it. It's gotten so inexpensive, it's crazy. So let me help you if I can, um, and um, and you can call my office or, or schedule at danpersonmd.com. Um, another, there's so many people asking great questions, but another big one is what to do when you have thyroid issues, specifically a lot of women wondering about Hashimoto's. That's a loaded question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I, I, clearly I treat a lot of thyroid problems too. Um, Hashimoto's is interesting. This is the way we, that I was taught to treat it. It's how the, you got to treat the patient. It's, it goes back to that old saying, what do you believe, your lion eyes or, or the, the, the paper in front of you or, the, or what they're telling you? You believe your lion eyes. I want to know what your symptoms are. Have they improved? I, and we'll talk about your thyroid dosing, all that. So it's a real medical paradigm that's got to be changed um, to treat Hashimoto's appropriately. 
because sometimes you just need more thyroid and doctors aren't willing to give it even though it's because you have thyroid resistance. It used to be a big concept um, prior to the 70s, prior to no pharmaceutical. That's K-N-O-L-L and Synthroid. The advent of those onto the marketplace, they kind of forced a change in the, in the educational pro, uh, process doctors went through uh, before I went through medical school and stuff and residency. But um, I look at free T3s, free T4s, and I follow you symptomatically. Are you better? Are your hands and feet warm? Um, and I have a thyroid book around here somewhere. It's called, uh, what's it called? Cold Hands, Cold Feet. Oh yeah, No More Cold Hands, Cold Feet, Out of the Ice Age. Uh, a book about hypothyroidism it was number one for a while. The reason we called it that, I don't know, those are weird names, but people on Amazon don't search for it. I have a thyroid problem, they search for, man, I have cold hands, cold feet. And so it really ranked on in there and it still does, but get that book if you want to know more it's it's just a wealth of information all referenced everything i talk about all this in there um and um and there's some really good supportive products um that young living creates like the roman and, and endoflex and some of those that can really help so uh the roman the max dose is five at night three in the morning gary young taught me that personally um and so that's the max dose you'd want to start low and go slow so okay um is it, someone's asking, they never had headaches when they were pregnant, but as soon as they gave birth, their headaches came back. Is it because their progesterone is really low after? Yep, yep. Yeah, progesterone, uh, remember it deals with migraines. See, uh, Frivianium migranius, <laughs> <laughs> which similar to, but anyway, that means prevents migraines. So, um, and it does, there's tons of studies that show that progesterone cools off arteries especially in the head, uh, neck area of women, it helps with migraines. But, um, and when women are pregnant, so a normal level of progesterone for a, a 20 something year old girl or 30 something year old girl is 10, 10 nanograms per deciliter. But then when they get pregnant, uh, it goes up into 90. And by the last day of pregnancy, uh, it's at 900. Yeah, it's crazy high, how high it gets. And then the next day after they have the baby, it drops to zero for a few weeks. No wonder the migraines come back. But um, so you want to keep using uh, whatever progesterone support product you have. Um, I can't imagine what that would be, but you'd want to keep using that. And um, and or if it's really bad, again, go big, get natural progesterone from someone and really load up on it and it'll get rid of your symptoms. So I've got another question that goes along with that. Can you use progesterone products while you're breastfeeding? I always think so, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, next question. And your breast milk won't taste progesterone flavored. <laughs> well, cool. I don't know that for sure, but yeah. sorry, that was weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Can taking estrogen cause breast cancer? No. Okay. Did you hear me? I said no. Yeah, I just blew away about 2,000 of you are going, wait, what? My doctor said, so some women, it's just like, can progesterone cause breast cancer? No, it will not. It has never been associated with causation of breast cancer. But are there progesterone receptor positive breast cancers? Yes, but it didn't cause that. Progesterone typically um, causes uh, apoptosis of breast cancer cells. If you don't believe me, go to PubMed, ser search progesterone and the word apoptosis and watch the hundreds of articles come up, studies that show that it pops breast cancer cells. Um, it doesn't cause them, it, it pops them, but there are receptor positive, progesterone receptor positive, PR positive breast cancer cells. It's the same with estrogen. The estradiol study alone, the estradiol arm of the WHO study showed that women had a 30% reduction in breast cancer. So unopposed breast cancer is supposed to be put you at risk for, sorry, unopposed estradiol is supposed to mean not opposed with progesterone, like I've said before. It's supposed to put you at risk for breast cancer, and it might do that, but um, it's not going to cause breast cancer. Um, and it just, uh, this has been associated with it, but it doesn't mean cause and effect. If that, you follow me on that. I just, yeah, I just probably blew a lot of you away with that concept, but um so when I give oral estradiol to patients, 
it's knowing that it causes a 30% reduction in their breast cancer risk. Now, progesterone, on the other hand, progesterona, anyway, it causes, it causes a 500 plus percent decreased risk of breast cancer. And by the way, did you know that girls taking birth control pills uh, at 18 or prior to that have a 500 plus percent lifetime risk of death, death, death from breast cancer. 500 plus percent increased risk of death. That's from two Northern European studies. You know, we love all those Scandinavian countries so they come out with studies like that, that freak everyone out, especially the big pharma companies. Don't give your daughters uh, at any age, matter of fact, but especially in below 20, below 18, uh, birth control pills, please. Okay, I'll probably be banned for life from Facebook for saying that, but um, at least maybe I saved a life or two. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, going on the other side of life, the people who don't take birth control pills, um, someone, this was one of my favorite comments, they said, they are as dry as a month old biscuit in the lady parts. Help, what can I do? PD8020, try that to play with first. But if it doesn't work, yeah, I said it before, you're gonna need a testosterone cream from your local compounding pharmacy and a doctor who knows how to prescribe it. I go ask them if they can't help you. I'm giving you inside secrets here. Go ask your compounding pharmacist. They'll tell you who can prescribe it. Yeah, they will. And if that doesn't do it, um, we should talk. So um, That'll get rid of it. It'll take a few weeks. It's the number one horrible, yucky, weird, Terrible issue, no libido, dry as a, what, three-month-old biscuit? What's she say? That's <laughs> hilarious. A month old I, think I think we got a winner there. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's, that's a winner. So. <laughs> um, that's a good one, huh? Yeah, it's hilarious. That's a common no, it's problem sad that too. many, like a big question that we always get is, the sex just hurts, so like, what can you do? You, improve your testosterone, try the PD-8020 trick, just for fun, um, and more than that but um and if it doesn't work then get some cream go go talk to your company pharmacist I, they will love to refer you to a doctor who knows how to prescribe their testosterone cream they'll love that they'll love you okay yeah that's great um another common question is facial hair on a woman how do they she's a laser i don't know I, yeah i don't even know on that one um I've had I've tested DHA levels. I've done all kinds of things. If you're using, if you're taking DHA like in PD eighty twenty or something like that, there. If you've taken too much of it for too long, it might cause facial hair. But that's it. Um, otherwise, I don't know. I never know. Could have been. Who knows? I don't know that one. I can't answer. Sorry. That's okay. Um, Use a laser. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> um, next question: Do you trust Zydo scans? I yeah, know. you know what, they the my experience, yeah, they're not like lab trusting, but I've also seen crazy labs that didn't fit with the patient, had to repeat them, and then they came back normal. So I don't know, but Zyto scans are, are fairly uh, accurate, probably, at least in my experience, I've, I've been quite surprised how accurate they are. So yeah, you have to say, yeah, for the most part, yeah. I know, I'll probably be hung by my local um, medical association, even though I'm a big part of it, but um it's just what I've seen. So I'd have to go, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great. Um, back to Young Living Oils. Uh, we've had a lot of questions about Dragon Time. Do you recommend that oil to be used with some of these oils or Sure you can. This is this is this is the Primo one. Dragon Time was way before this. And then um Mary Young asked for this uh specifically. And um uh, and so, um, I don't know why the upswing in Dragon Time and lately, it's, it's, it's odd, but, uh, it's still a good product, but this is far superior in my humble opinion. So I'm just telling you this. <laughs> this. Awesome. Um, this is another specific person. They're saying they have really terrible, angry mood swings around ovulation and menstruation and high anxiety and any added stressors, such as like even noise is overwhelming and they're just crying and angry. <laughs> and they have PCOS on top of it. They just want to know, what do you recommend? <laughs> Was that obvious? Lots of progesterone or a product that has progesterone in it, uh, if you know one. Um, <clears throat> lots of progesterone. 
and uh, stop that nonsense. Even if you start it during the first hint of any of that, those kind of symptoms, um, start using it. Start using a lot of it or a product that contains it, of which shall not be named. But um, yeah, use it for just Arona if you're in Mexico. <laughs> um, another common question is during the cycle, during your monthly cycle, is there a time that you should increase your usage of progesterone or do you just keep it consistent? Yeah, you increase it. Sorry, that was a little loud. Yeah, you increase it um, uh, when it gets bad. You want If you want your cycle to go away really quickly and last maybe a half a day or a day, uh, use more of it and shut that sucker down, man, in your misery. So, um, yeah, yeah, you can go go lighter the first day or two, but then hit it hard. So, Great. pour it on. Yeah. Whatever it is. <laughs> um, another good question is someone is wondering, since we rotate where we apply the oils and that kind of stuff, is there ever a time that you should take a break from them occasionally, like one or all of them, or can your body get too used to using them, or is there never such thing? Or I've n Not my experience. I haven't seen that. And I think you talked to the, the diamonds and crown diamonds and Royal Crown Diamonds and the Bazooka Level Nuclear Crown Super Diamonds and all those, and they'll tell you the same thing. I've never seen that, so. Awesome. Um, and then, I think you said this earlier, but I've seen it pop up a couple times, is you said to rotate where you use it because... Yeah, you don't want to get, you don't want to build, you clog your receptors, you don't, it's just for fun, kicks and giggles, move it elsewhere. You also don't want to irritate your skin, who knows why. Just rotate it, it's just safer that way and better for your body. Awesome. Um, someone's looking for better cholesterol levels, better sleep, better thyroid levels, weight control. Do you have any recommendations for that? I know that's a big... Well, the first thing I, I would do in all those situations is, is, you know me, I'm going to say probably start with master formula or get an intracellular micronutrient panel, uh, that spectra cell that we use, get that. That's the best test in the world. And you see it in all my books. It's in all of them, I think, certainly in here. Really big time in here if you want to see what a test looks like. but um, And uh, I send them to a lot of distributors. A lot of my followers on Facebook, They, you know, when they do a, a phone visit, we send them a spectra cell kit, and they have someone in their upline or church or ward or, or um, synagogue or um, neighborhood draw it, a nurse or someone or a relative. And then they we it gets uh, FedEx overnight to Texas to Houston and run and, and two weeks later we have the results back. That'd be probably the first thing I do. It could help with all that. So um, that's the easiest thing to go with. It's they're not cheap, but man, are they incredible? So awesome. Um, is there any way we can encourage better progesterone production in our own bodies? Yeah, I get off the birth control pills. Get off the to get the IUD out the. I like the copper IUD, yeah, and um, try master formula. It might be a vitamin deficiency, um, nutritional deficiency, eat more protein in your diet, stuff like that. Um, and if if you, that doesn't help, uh, you know what I'd say, get a spectra cell or look at your genetics. Something funky is going on there if you have low levels and you're in your 20s, 30s, um, or even early 40s going, what is going on? Because my mom didn't go through menopause until 55. Why am I doing this at 42? So, uh, yeah, be be thinking, be wondering. Uh, I know I'm, I'm a Western MD touting intracellular vitamin, mineral amino acid levels. Am I crazy? But it's just what we did in, in research, and it really works. It really helps. So. Awesome. Um, if someone has a clotting factor. Factor 5 Leiden. Yeah. Can and should or progesterone be used? Um. Talk to your doctor. I'm going to say no. Uh, the studies have shown topical, uh, and um, and other things are certainly probably safe. But still, talk to your doctor, and I'm not going to suggest anything, um, even remotely. I'm not going to touch that. So, but um, but uh, and if you we can work it out with your doctor, then that's a different deal. Usually, they'll just blanketly go, "No, you can't take anything," which the literature hasn't really supported that approach. Um, and I think probably topical progesterone is really okay, but talk to your doctor first. Don't do anything without his advice. Awesome. Don't listen to me. <laughs> Ever. No. 
Um, can progesterone cause you to gain weight? Occasionally, a woman will claim that, uh, but all the big studies have shown that it causes weight loss or weight normalization. You see it over and over and over again, but yeah, some women who take a lot of it and really love it, yeah, they might gain a little weight or get a little fluffy, but uh, usually it's not. I've, and most of the time, women tend to normalize their weight. They get really happy, they sleep well, depression goes down, um, mood elevates. Um, they just get really happy with progesterone. So it's the woman's feel good hormone. Thus, my book, does it say that on there, Jackson? Mm -hmm. It says the woman's feel good hormone in Spanish. I mean that. So, yeah. That's great. What, what is what is that? We don't have a real copy of the American English copy. Not even at your house, no. <laughs> <laughs> we ran I think out. I gave the last one away today at the office. Okay. I think you did. Okay, that's hilarious. Um, what do you recommend for brain fog? Um, the best thing I've ever found is our glutathione, that VARS glutathione. If you haven't tried it, you should. You can get it from, um, our, our, uh, physician designed, uh, is that right? Physician design.com website or Amazon. Um, and, um, I would probably get that. You're gonna learn a lot more about that particular product in the next several months. That's all I'll leave that with. You guys are all gonna get to know a lot more about that. Um, and um, yeah, I get to ponder that in a serious quest, quote tonight. Um, so just so you know, uh, you wanna become familiar with glutathione. It's a super antioxidant. It's probably our best selling product. We just got awarded a couple of patents on it or a really big patent actually. And we're actually um, starting a biotech company around it. And um, it's gonna be a lot of fun what we're gonna do with that. But I wonder if anyone's picked that. Anyway, you never know what someone might use that as a supplement, what company, whatever. But anyway, so that's, yeah, ponder that. Okay, that's all I'll say, I'll <laughs> set up now. Um, I don't know if you mentioned this one. Never mind, sorry, I skipped that one. Um, is there like a little thing on your glass? What is that thing? Reflection. Okay, good. <laughs> um, it was like a design on there. So someone was saying that they use progestins or some kind of progesterone product at least once a day. They don't have any PMS issues and they have a fairly easy period. Like all that's pretty good, but they're just worried about transitioning into menopause. Do you have any recommendations? Keep using it or use more of it if you start transitioning. Or stop using it and save the bottle for later. <laughs> Put it in your fridge. You might need it in the next four or five years. You probably will. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I know you talked about hair loss before, but this one is specifically postpartum hair loss. Is there anything particular with... Happens a lot. Um, it could be a lack of progesterone. It could be, again, a vitamin deficiency. Those little kids are like vampires attached to your uterus. They suck the vitamins right out of you, clearly. Uh, and it could be a big vitamin deficiency. Again, master formula. Take lots of it. Enjoy it and see if your hair doesn't come back as should. So, and then just a couple more. What have you found is the best thing for infertility? Do you have any recommendations? Yeah, a Spectra Cell Micronutrient Panel. Awesome. Yeah, because you'll figure it. You'll you'll either get really good hints or you'll see what it is. And time after time, I do those. Uh, really, they're 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 not cheap. They're six hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, that's what we charge for them and reading them and everything. But um, Man, is it an important test, and it's much cheaper than than going out and paying twelve thousand for for a uh, IVF that may or may not work. And if you have vitamin deficiency, it's not gonna work. It's gonna be a nightmare. So, um, and they also uncover a lot of genetic issues when I get those. I see patterns in those that are dead giveaways. Like if you have a on a spectrum of you have a B twelve folate pentothenate deficiency, and maybe a, a glutathione deficiency, and all that. Um, you have MTHFR or some other bad methylation issue and, and that should be dealt with and you should get on the right kind of prenatal and quickly. So uh, even then, or master formula, which I dearly love. Yeah. So, but and I told you how we designed that. So, um, couple more questions. Uh, two more. Yeah, oh, two then more. we get to announce the winners. Yes. So, is it Melba Toast and who is it? No, we don't, no, don't tell me no, again. No, no. Um, so someone, they are new to Young Living and they're really interested in these products, but this is like their situation. 
Um, they just got off two toxic medications for hormone and mood balance. They're withdrawing really bad. Their body's all out of whack. They have agitation, mood swings, anxiety, depression, fatigue, body aches, lack of motivation, low sex drive, irregular periods, high blood pressure, memory, lack of memory, um, lack of sleep. And they're just wondering if those will help at all. Wow. <laughs> yeah, call me. You should call me probably. We we can sort through all that, but you probably need a, a spectra cell, maybe some genetic testing. What in the heavens name were you taking and why? Uh, that's the quite kind of questions I want to know from a medical standpoint, and um, and let's spend some time figuring it all out and getting rid of those problems. Um, you could also take a lot of progesterone um, or maybe some natural products that could really help um, and see if they're um, being up to you again, seeing if they might benefit you. But well, you maybe need a lot of help. It's according to how long all that's been going on. If it's been going on for like a week, <laughs> well, <laughs> I'd probably. Not worry that much about it, but if it's good and going on for six months, you're in trouble. We need to talk. Call me. So, yeah. Is that it? Well, Sorry, I didn't get to all the questions. Question. No, there's one more question. The last, oh, that the lady kept oh, asking, that, where can I get these products that you're talking about that you're hmm. kind of showing went through your little hands? Oh, sorry. I'm not a Young Living distributor. I can't be because we design products and manufacture them for Young Living. And my attorney is like, you can't join. It's funny because I've had people join me, meaning they take my name and information, and suddenly I'm getting a check from Young Living. I have to go back, get back the check, get my name off, hunt down who did this. I've had it happen four or five times over the the last ten years. It's crazy. Don't sign me up. Um, but um, but um, you find a Young Living distributor in your area, and and I yeah and I we do develop products for other companies and stuff. I'm just. Right now tonight, talking about Young Living, and I dearly love them. Gary Young was a good friend of mine. So, um, and find a Young Living distributor in your area, in your church, in your neighborhood, or on Facebook. Wow, there's probably about a thousand of you right now sitting there. So, uh, and they can help you get the products. If not, you can just buy them directly from them. Uh, or hope I you win tonight. Um, or sign up and get them whatever wholesale or distributor pricing. Um, they're good products, all natural. Uh, really specific. I love that company because of what they do. So, so who are the the winners? The winners. <laughs> I posted it and I deleted it really fast because I did it by accident. But I'll post their names and um, just contact us. You can. I'll post my email and just email me your shipping address and we'll get these shipped out to you. I don't get to know their names. It's a I'll, mystery. I'm gonna tell you right now. Okay. Okay. The so. mystery patient or the so not patients. So, Their names Gertrude, right? no. Grubworm. Oh, it's uh, Leela McGee. Woo um, Sharon McWife. Did I get that right? <laughs> um, and Christina Jones Saucier. I love that name, Saucier. Those are your so, names on Facebook. So, we're just going to post that. So, Saucier. I'll try and tag you and we'll let you know you won. If anyone knows Saucier, she won. I, don't, I, I think I'm saying it right. It could be Saucier. It could be Saucier. Are you Saucier? It could be Saucier. So, um, anyway, I'm having fun with that. It's like Purser, really. Mm -hmm. Can't do much with that. So, okay. Purser. Purser. Dr. Purser. Um, what am I in Japan? I can't remember. Dr. Pasa. Pasa san. Pasa san. Yep, that's what I am. That's really good. <laughs> Yeah, we can't speak, we don't speak Japanese clearly. I know one word in, Jap in Japanese, it's uh, domo. I can say that whenever you get in an elevator, just say domo to all the guys around you. It's like domo. It's like the one switchblade. It's a, a, it's a Swiss Army knife, sorry, of a word. It means a million different things. So domo, and thanks for watching, and watch for my new book. Watch for my crazy video on um, the one-year-old versus vaccine versus autism. That's going to rock the world. Um, and uh, it's going to be amazing. And I love you guys. Dan Persimd here at danpersimd.com and physiciandesign.com. I'm out.